Okay, so welcome back. Now recently we did a series of videos where we're talking about developing this wonderful c -sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms application. And what it does is it allows you to grab information from an internet web server, a free web server called airplanes.live. You can use other web servers if you want. And basically you say, okay, for a given location anywhere around the world, you give it the latitude and longitude and how many miles in range you want to detect aircraft flying and it will return to you information about all of the flights that have been detected, all of the aircraft that have been detected in that range. And here you can see an example. We've got a satellite image and we've said within 30 mile range of the center of the satellite image, give me all of the aircraft. And it has given us, in this case, five aircraft and we are using that data in our C-Sharp application to display those five aircraft, their location and their heading and also their call sign. Now, in doing this, you may notice that occasionally, for example, you might be, you know, if, you, if you're measuring your local area around your home or office, you might notice that, hey, I heard an aircraft flying over my house, but if I look at this tracking data, it doesn't show an aircraft flying. So maybe there's not enough coverage for some reason in my area. Wouldn't it be nice if I could improve the coverage? And you may start to be thinking about how this actually happens, how this web server gets this data that it can send to you. And often it is basically a bunch of volunteers, maybe hobbyists, ham radio fans or radio fans in general. And what they will do is they will set up their radio receivers grab the data and send that to the web server that they can then send out to you. So probably it depends on how many volunteers are in your area grabbing the data and sending it to the web server. So you might be thinking, well, maybe I can add to that. Maybe I can give that data to the web server. But the problem is, you know, maybe I have to get a very expensive radio receiver at my home or office and set it all up, and that's just a little bit more than I can do. Well, what we're gonna talk about in this series of videos is how for a very small amount of money, generally less than 50 US dollars, you can set up a piece of equipment that plugs into a USB port on your computer and has an antenna connected to it, and you can start receiving your own information about local flights and maybe send that to the web server and add to the coverage of that web server. And here we've got an example of our C-sharp application that's grabbing from the web server. And what I've got here is a console output from a application that is connecting to one of those USB dongles, it's called, connected to a computer. And it is giving the local antenna coverage the tracked flights in the local area that we can directly compare with this airplanes.live. And you can see here we've got, um, it says there's nine flights within 30 miles and they're displayed here and listed here in this data grid view. And here we've got the results of the detections from a USB dongle, the $50 USB dongle and antenna and you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six flights where this has 10 flights. Now, clearly that means we're getting fewer detected flights and this antenna is not limited to this 30 miles. It's whatever it can receive. And we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine now, while this one is getting 10 and a couple of these are not it's connecting to the flight, but it's not giving us much information. So what we're going to talk about in this set of videos is how you can do this, how you can set up your own USB dongle with an antenna to, to capture in your local area. What are the benefits and what are the costs? Again, it's only about 50 US dollars to set something up. However, as we'll find out, setting up all of the software to get this working can be a bit of a challenge. And we're going to look at, at the end of the day, are you getting much benefit over what you can get from airplanes.live? You can see here we're getting fewer detections 
So let's take a look at some of the things we need to consider besides the fact that we can get a, a very inexpensive hardware. In terms of actually implementing this, what are the benefits and costs of doing this? So now first, let's take a closer look at the technology that allows you to receive radio signals that tell you the location and heading and altitude and speed and lots of other information about not only commercial, but private aircraft uh, flying in your area. Now, modern airplanes use something called an ADSB, which is called Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast Mode S Transponder. So you'll see this terminology in many places when you start to investigate this. And that technology periodically broadcasts location and altitude information to air traffic controllers. So what you would be doing is you would be receiving that same radio signal that is sent to the air traffic controllers, but you would also have to, on your own, figure out how best to receive it, what the antenna should be, how to tune the antenna, how to tune the receiver, and also, more importantly, how to decode the data that is sent over those radio waves. And that ends up being quite a task. So we're going to talk about that. Now, ADSB broadcasts at a frequency of 1,090 megahertz, or 1.09 gigahertz. This frequency is line of sight, and that's extremely important. Uh, when you're talking about receiving signals at this frequency range, if, for example, there is a mountain between your antenna and the aircraft that you want to monitor, you probably won't receive the signal because you have to visibly be able to see the aircraft, or at least even if it's very far away, there has to be a direct line of sight in order for you to receive the signal. So, you know, if you are in a valley and there's hills around you, you may not receive anything. If you're at the top of a hill, you might receive a lot. So a lot of the reception and also what's coming to you from airplanes.live or other web servers uh, depends on the volunteers who are receiving these signals, but also the quality of the antenna, the quality of the radio, and also their geographic location. Are they in a place where they are line of sight to the aircraft? So, you know, you may end up setting all this up and finding out that you can't receive much information about the aircraft because you are down in a valley and so on. So it depends on the altitude of the aircraft and a lot of things. So just keep in mind, this is not a, you know, press a button and you're going to receive all the signals. This depends on a lot of different things. So what we're going to be doing is we've got the aircraft transmitting signals. We're going to have an antenna. And we're going to have this dongle, which is basically just plugs into the USB port. And we'll show you this. Um, this is the $50 combination of a dongle plus an antenna. And really, all we need from this in order to display in a command window like we showed or in a C-sharp application, basically, we just want to extract from all this the call sign, the latitude, longitude, and heading. And if we can get other data, that's fine. But really, we don't need a lot, but we are going to have to take whatever signal is coming into our radio and have some software that can decode that. And that can end up being very challenging. So we're going to plug this into a COM port in our c -sharp application. Hopefully we can access this data in our c -sharp application and display it and maybe compare it to what we were receiving with airplanes.live. And if there are any local aircraft that we're seeing in addition to airplanes.live, we can add that to the stream. So here is the device that we've been talking about. There are other versions of this, but this is one good example. Uh, in this case, it's about $42 US, and um, it includes this dongle here, some antennas, some long antennas, some short antennas. Um, it's got this connection to, um, you can see here, you can have a suction cup to mount it on your window. Um, you've also got this stand here, which is a three-legged stand. You can mount it on a table or wherever. And you've also got some coaxial cables. So basically everything you need here, hardware-wise, to hook up an antenna through this dongle. This is basically what's called a SDR, or Software Defined Radio which basically performs all the functions of a radio receiver. 
gets the signal from the antenna, goes through here and converts it to USB data. And again, we're going to have to figure out from that USB data how to decode it and to make it into something useful. So inside that USB dongle, there is a bunch of stuff that we're going to have to be kind of familiar with because unfortunately, this is not just a matter if you've written any uh, applications that have dealt with the serial COM port. It's not a matter of just doing a read write to the serial COM port because you have to interface with some of these integrated circuits and you have to get down to a fairly low level. And a lot of the code that's going to be necessary is written in C. It's kind of low level hardware code that accesses registers on these integrated circuits. And you're going to have to do a lot of that plus some conversion. So it's going to be fairly complicated, just so you know. So here is the device. And if we zoom in to one end of this dongle, the end that has the USB connector, you can see here that plugs into your computer. Here is the traces that come from the USB connector into the dongle. And if you're familiar with USB, you can see we've got four pins. We've got the outside pins, which are the plus, five volt, and ground. And then the two inner pins are the data pins. And one is data plus and one is data minus. And I've highlighted the tracks as they come from the USB. And you can see these two tracks come into this integrated circuit here. And this is a very important integrated circuit. It's a Realtek RTL2832U. And to the right of this is the input from the antenna that's coming into this RTL2832. And it's converting that into USB data that we can access from the computer. And you can see it comes into pins 40 and 41, which are called HSDP, which is data positive, and HSDM, or data minus. So uh, in the future, we'll look in more detail about the signals and everything and what this RTL2832 does. But just for now, you can see that it's basically just connecting to the data pins, the USB, and that's going into a computer. And the software is accessing this information from the antenna and it's accessing this and it's all getting demodulated in the circuitry and going into the USB. And one of the challenges is you're going to have to be talking directly to this integrated circuit. And that introduces some complexities and some challenges uh, that we'll talk about later. And it's one of the reasons why you have to treat this a little bit special and do a little bit of extra work, and we'll talk about that later. Now, fortunately, there is a lot of open source community hobbyist code out there that allows you to do that. Now, as I mentioned before on this channel, open source can be good, but I tend to avoid it if at all possible. And that is for many reasons. Um, you don't know who developed it. You get what you get. You know, generally there's no support. A documentation can be very spotty, if at all. And you're kind of relying on being able to understand what they did in their code. And if it doesn't work, you may be on your own and you may not get a good solution. So there are going to be some DLLs that come from open source community efforts from hobbyists. And keep in mind, this can not only receive radio transmissions from aircraft, but a lot of ham radio, some voice stuff. So there is a huge world of hobbyist community that will utilize something like this for many different things aside from just receiving aircraft transmission. So you're going to be sorting through a lot of information for things that are totally unrelated to this aircraft decoding. So there are going to be some DLLs you're going to have to access. We showed this console window with some local detected aircraft, and that is an open source application called Dump 1090 that we're going to show you how to deal with. But keep in mind, again, these are open source. A lot of these, um, this code is in C language. So if you're going to be trying to integrate with the C Sharp application, that can be a bit of a challenge. And also, a lot of this is developed by people who are using Linux or Raspberry Pi hobbyist uses. So if you're doing it on Windows, it's going to be yet another challenge. So 
There's a lot of challenges here. It's open source, it's C language, it's mostly Linux based or Raspberry Pi. So there's going to be quite a bit of effort. So you have to decide, you know, for what you're getting, for what you're receiving, is it really worth the effort? So assuming it is, we're going to show you at least some ways to access this stuff and maybe put it into your own C Sharp application. So in the next video, we're going to dig into the details of the software and the drivers and everything that you need to get installed and to get everything working so that you can, as a minimum, get that dump 1090 application running for the console window and then ultimately be able to access the data from your SDR dongle and bring it into a software application, a C-sharp application, and hopefully add to what you see here if there are any additional flights that your antenna is receiving that aren't already covered by airplanes.live. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.